Hello, dear friends. I hope you are doing well. Today, we are going to tell you a popular tale that is well known among most, if not all Tunisian homes, including mine. First, I just want to give you a disclaimer. These tales has no relation whatsoever with the religion aspect. They might be just stories to scare little children with, or all beliefs even before Islamic religion thrives. Without further ado, let us get into the story. Have you ever wandered around Tunisian streets and noticed some houses hanging what we call in Tunisia Qurbel, a traditional sieve used to separate and break up clumps and dry ingredients such as flour and to aerate and combine them. Well, those aren't for food purpose, but to keep the bird of death and the mother of children, Nausha, away from the little children. That's right, our story today is about Nausha. So what is or who is Nausha and why is she called the bird of death? Nausha is a bird of owl line, but it is larger in size, with a sinister voice, and it is a very famous bird in Tunisia. I have personally investigated about this bird to my mom, and she told me that her ancestors have made an accord with this bird not to come near their children and their grand-grand-grandsons and daughters for all the blind line relatives. Weird, right? How can a person make a settlement with a bird? Well, since we are talking about an ancient story, let us not forget that people in the ancient ages believed in what we call now myths and fairy tales. They were a part of different cultures in the world and are used to explain natural phenomena, where people came from and how their civilizations developed, and why things happen as they do. At their most basic level, myths come forth by giving a sense of order and meaning to what can sometimes seem a chaotic world. So my mom told me that one day her grand-grand-grandmother set a trap for the bird of death while it arrived at her house spotting its prey, a human baby. After she captured it, she asked the bird to leave her children and all her bloodline safe. And here, there are two answers that this bird could give. If it shakes its head or hands its left wing, that means it refuses the accord and that it will hunt the children until it gets them. And if it nods or hands its right wing, that means it accepted the accord and will never come near any child of all the bloodline. My mom told me that Nausha agreed on her grand-grand-grandmother. Maybe that is why I haven't seen or heard about this when I was a child. But I heard many stories from my friends how that they know many families had their children killed by this bird of death, and Nausha usually kills its prey while they are sleeping by sucking off their brains, starting with their tongues. Apologies for the cruel graphics. But what are the origins of this myth, and what made this bird take vengeance on little children? The tale says that long, long ago, there lived a man and his wife. The husband was a peasant, and the wife stayed home to take care of the house. However, her husband never treated her fairly, especially for the fact that she wasn't able to bear children. But little did he know that her multiple miscarriages were because of his bad treatment and tyranny. He used to beat her for the silliest reasons and force her to work with him out in the land by carrying heavy metals and doing hard labor. All that contributed in her misfortune of having a baby. Until one day, 
the woman started to feel some changes in her body and was getting unusual morning sickness. And after a few months, a baby mum started chewing on her belly. The woman was dancing with joy and she thanked God for the great blessing. Even her husband started treating her better. She thought that her child was the only path to joy. After several months, the wife delivered a healthy baby boy whom she named Salim. That means healthy or sane. Years passed and the boy became a jewel to his mother since she had him after long years of patience and praying. However, her husband was back to his mistreatment and ruthlessness. One day, when he was away working, his wife was finished with her daily work and had it to prepare lunch for her husband. But she couldn't find his sieve anywhere. So she told her boy to go to the neighbors and ask for the sieve to borrow. Houses in the ancient times weren't very close to one another. A neighbor before could mean two hours walk. So she asked her five-year-old boy to hurry and not to go anywhere else, nor to stop for a minute. However, of course, children cannot see an interesting thing and ignore it. On his way back home, the little boy saw a little bird jumping from one stone to another. So the boy threw the sieve aside and started following it without awareness to the time passing. The mother started worrying about her boy, but at the same time, she was filled with rage and fear from her husband's reaction if he got home to a no meal. After some time, an hour later from when the boy is expected to be home, he arrived carrying the sieve with mud all over his clothes. So the mother immediately knew that he was late because he was playing around. After that she made it clear to him that no playing was allowed. Without thinking, she grabbed her son and started beating him everywhere on his small fragile body and with anything that comes in her hands until the little boy took his last breath. When she returned to her consciousness and realized what her hands had done, she started crying and grunting in pain with her baby's lifeless body in her hands. And suddenly, feathers began to cover her body and wings started to grow out of her back. Then her nose turned into a sharp beck. Then she fluttered her wings and flew away towards the mountains uttering. I will chase little boys until they are able to graze sheep, and I will hunt little girls until their hair reaches their knees. Her words mean that she will go after little children until they hit puberty and grow older. The Tunisian legend goes that in order to keep the mother of children bird away, the parents must hang a sieve or place it near the head of their little babies so that when an Osha arrives and sees the sieve, she runs away, since the sieve represents her nightmare, because of which she killed her own son. Even though this story is very hard to believe, many families in the 21st century claim that Nausha, the bird of death, is not a myth, and that it exists in real life, and they even hang a sieve to protect their newborn babies. But what about you? What do you think of this creature? Is it a mere legend or real? And would you ever go that far by hanging sieve to protect your own child from the unknown? I'll leave you the answer. See you next Sunday. Bye bye.